Well, in this conversation, we're going to talk about one of the most frequently asked questions I get, and that's, what do I do about no-shows? I understand that very well. Uh, today, there are many practices that want to do better. Uh, every year, Levin Group is the organization that does the dental economics, Levin Group Annual Practice Survey. Uh, 2009 was the worst economic year ever as a benchmark. Things stabilized in 2010, and we're seeing slow, steady progress from there. But nonetheless, there are plenty of practices that are still wondering, how do I grow? I don't want to just sit back anymore. I know the days of just hanging a shingle and going into practice and being successful are coming to a close. I have to run a really good business. In fact, we're seeing a lot of areas where there's an oversupply of dentists making competition a real-life factor. One of the sayings that I've had since the last Great Recession, as they called it, is that businesses need to do more with what they've got. We can't just live on the new and the new and the new. And while new patients are certainly an integral part of any practice to replace patients who can't come back, those that die, those that move, those that lose their insurance, we are in a position today where we're not doing enough with what we have today. We have to do more with what we've got. And to that end, one of the most important things we can do is to make sure that we hit the target of not more than 1% of our patients being no-shows, which includes last-minute cancellations. Think about it. Just because somebody calls you up 30 minutes in advance to tell you they're going to screw you, that doesn't mean that it's okay. They're not coming in and you've lost time. So for a general dentist, if you're going to do a crown preparation appointment and someone doesn't show up, or if they're nice enough to call you to tell you that they're not going to show up, you will lose money on that procedure. Neither are acceptable. And the confirmation methods that we're using today are abysmal. We are just wasting front desk staff time, calling homes, leaving messages on phone machines. Did you know, speaking of targets, that 80% of the calls to homes for confirmation go to phone machines? Nobody's even there to take the call, and they really don't want to hear it later. They typically just click it off. So we can talk in another conversation about the benefits of email and text messaging uh, for confirmation, but not right now. Right now, I want to talk about no-shows and last-minute cancellations and how to eliminate them. The first step is to add more value into your practice for your patients. So one of the things I said about business is you've got to do more with what you've got. The second principle for business today, which is different than it was years ago, is people want more value for their money. They're much less forgiving about not getting real value. If they don't want value, they'll go to the Kmarts and the Walmarts and the Targets and get the cheapest prices they can. And that's how those organizations market themselves. Dental practices don't. So we're in the position of having to add more value and do more with what we've got. The first step in dealing with no-shows and last-minute cancellations is to recognize that we need to retrain the patients. So Levin Group clients go through a six-month retraining program of the patients after we implement the system. Everything's about systems. All practice management is about systems. It's that simple. Get this target set up, build systems to achieve them, and you get the scripting in place, value creation scripting, and you're going to win. And business is about winning and losing. I know that every dentist wants to give the best quality they can. First and foremost, that is the number one reason we come to work. But we also have to run a business. And if people don't show up, the business doesn't run very well. And too many dentists are paying a long-term price for being in that situation. Step one, patient no-shows. We use a technique called create demand. When we call the patient, we let them know that we miss them, we're proactive, we're positive, but we don't have another opening for 12 to 14 weeks. Dentistry has not created demand. There are people who call up for emergencies, but they can't come because they have a hair appointment. There are people who no-show because their child has a little league baseball game, and that child will be going to the major leagues, so they can't afford to miss one. Now, that was sarcasm, by the way, in this conversation. The reality is that we need to make dentistry more valuable. When you can't get in somewhere for 12 to 14 weeks, it's like the hot restaurant. Then suddenly they say, well, you can come at 5.30 or 9.30, and you actually take one of those because they've created demand. 
The second time the patient misses, and this is in the first six month retraining period, we use a second technique called threaten to charge. We never actually charge them, so don't get confused on that point, but we use a technique called threaten to charge. Mrs. Jones, as you may know, say as you may know, not as you know. If you say as you know, you'll create conflict because she'll say I didn't know that and she's right. But if you say as you may know, she's wondering what it was that she might or might not have known. Mrs. Jones, as you may know, we have a $100 fee for a missed appointment. Then, without pausing, you add the words, but Dr. Smith asked me not to charge it to you this time. If you don't do that, the patient's going to get mad, argue about the 100, and probably never come back. Instead, make sure they interpret it properly. We're never charging them. Mrs. Jones, as you may know, we have a $100 fee for a missed appointment, but, we're, but Dr. Smith asked me not to charge it to you this time. You will universally hear the words thank you back from the patient. They will be appreciative even though they never knew this policy to begin with because there is no really charge policy. What we're doing is managing the patient to create cooperation while building value. Or one of my sayings, manage the patient while the patient perceives outstanding value from the practice. Now, once we've completed this phase, any patient who misses two appointments in a year, I recommend be released from the office. There are two ways to do this. You could literally send them a letter saying goodbye nicely, or you could say, well, we'll put you on a short list and call you when we have an opening, and only call when you have a last minute opening, which you will have many fewer of using this no-show technique. This may sound harsh to you, but after years and years of working with thousands of practices, we have found through our consulting method that patients who habitually no-show typically lose money for the practice over their lifetime. We went back, we pulled the records after the retraining period of the habitual offenders, and this is what we found. So if you want to spend money to have patients no-show, that's a, that's a choice. You can make that choice. If it's the bank president or a father of 10, you might not want to kick them out of your practice. But 99% of the patients who no-show habitually after the retraining period, this is a bad situation. They're wasting time. They're keeping other patients from having that time. You're losing money on procedures, and you're probably losing money lifetime. Is this a patient you really want in your practice? So, I want to share this conversation with you. hope you've enjoyed it. There's a ton more information on this and other topics on the Levine Group website. Feel free to go into the Resource Center. That's why we built it. And I wish you the very best of luck.